Of all the creatures on our home planet, this could be the only animal that could survive harsh conditions on Mars. The tardigrade. These fellas have another name because of their unusual looks. Water bears or moss piglets. They live literally everywhere across the globe, from coastal dunes to mountains, from the lush Amazon rainforests to the barren landscapes of Antarctica. Some live on land, but tardigrades are creatures that need water around their bodies to enable gas exchange and generally stay hydrated. That's why they prefer soil, moss, or leaves covered with a layer of water. And since they're aquatic creatures, they usually choose freshwater bodies like lakes, rivers, and ponds. You haven't come across these cool animals before because they're only 0.02 inches long. You can barely perceive them with the unaided eye. But since they're virtually immortal, we can assume they've developed some amazing survival tactics. If we loaded them in a tiny spaceship and sent them to Mars, they'd be a little shocked at first, especially because of the temperature. Sure, they can live through a wide range, even going below minus 458 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 302 degrees Fahrenheit. And Mars might seem like a very hot planet when you see it in pictures, but the temperatures there are actually low way lower than on Earth. I mean, it's farther from the Sun and has a thin atmosphere, so temperatures there can drop to minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit or go up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. On Earth, the lowest temperature was recorded in Antarctica. It was minus 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, while the highest occurred in California, 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Tardigrades are also pretty resilient when it comes to strong pressure they can take one that's six times bigger than the pressure at the bottom of the ocean. Now, for every 33 feet you go down below the surface, the pressure doubles. So, at a depth of 2.4 miles, the pressure is 380 times greater than at the surface. And in the very deepest parts of the ocean, it can be 1,100 times greater. The pressure on the red planet is about six times stronger than in the ocean depths. So I guess it's a little bit too much. It would be hard for these little creatures to adjust to such conditions. They would have to evolve through the next few generations to become even more resilient so that they could enjoy their time on Mars more. The food could be one of their main problems though. Some tardigrades mostly eat plants like moss, algae, or some flowering ones. And they like them served with a portion of bacteria. Others are carnivores that eat smaller tardigrades or other microscopic organisms. Well, they'd find nothing like this on Mars. So I guess we'd have to fill their tiny spaceships with lots of stashes of food they would be able to pull inside their tubular mouths. Now we're getting to the really tricky part, water. The red planet is a dry and dusty desert today. But come on, look at all those riverbanks and dried up deltas. Water must have flowed on its surface a long time ago. It's hard to understand where it all went, but it's highly possible most of the ancient water ended up trapped within minerals on the planet's crust. Some older research suggested that most of this water had escaped into space when the sun's radiation had ruined the atmosphere of Mars. But a new study has shown that only a little bit of water escaped while most of it is still there, hidden and waiting for us to discover it. Also, a few years ago, researchers found signs of hydrated minerals on the slopes of the red planet, where they saw mysterious darkish streaks that seemed to flow. It mostly happens during warm seasons, since they fade when it gets cooler. These downhill flows could be evidence of real liquid water on Mars. Scientists have discovered some minerals that confirm this idea too. These minerals can lower the freezing point of water like salt does on icy roads. That's why scientists think there might be a shallow underground flow of briny water that causes these streaks. Tardigrades probably have excellent instincts, considering they can survive even in the toughest conditions. So they'd probably find water on Mars way before us. But even if they didn't do it right away, they would still have their tactics to stay alive for a while. If this creature loses 99% of its water content, it can survive by pausing most of its vital functions it can remain in such a state for a couple of years. Tardigrades can absorb extremely strong impacts that would easily crush other animals, including us. They can withstand radiation levels so high that they could destroy a human. And even if we do send tardigrades to Mars one day, that won't be their first trip to space. 
In 2019, a spacecraft went to the moon, carrying thousands of tardigrades, the first lunar library, human DNA samples, and a DVD-sized archive that contained 30 million pages of information. The idea was to create archives of all the knowledge the human race had collected. But seconds before the spacecraft had to land, the mission control lost contact with it, and it crashed into the surface of the moon. The team was wondering what was going to happen with the spacecraft's cargo. After lots of discussion and analysis, they assumed that the library had survived, and even crazier, perhaps tardigrades had too. They were in this dehydrated kind of dormant state, so they shriveled up into tiny balls. They lowered their metabolism and expelled most of the water from their bodies, waiting for a better environment where they could be their best selves once again. These creatures can stay like this for decades and survive extremely harsh conditions. And this wasn't the first organized tour to space for tardigrades. In 2007, a team of scientists sent a group of these tiny water bears to orbit our home planet on the outside of a rocket for 10 days. They did pretty well, considering that when the rocket got back to Earth, 68% of these creatures were alive. Scientists don't put all their hopes only on these water bears. They keep testing if there are some other life forms that could survive on the red planet. They did an experiment called Biomex on the International Space Station. They took tiny organisms such as algae, bacteria, and other similar creatures and kept exposing them to really tough conditions in space for 18 months. This means things like huge changes in temperature, extreme radiation, and vacuum. The amazing part is that many of these tiny life forms survived these harsh conditions and came back to Earth as true space heroes. So they could probably deal with the hardships of living on Mars. Scientists studied archaea as well. Those are tiny, ancient microorganisms that have existed in salty seawater on our planet for more than three and a half billion years. Some of their relatives from the Arctic also survived in space-like conditions. But life on Mars doesn't have to be a whole new thing. Billions of years ago, the red planet might have been a bit like Earth. It most likely had water, and that's one of the key ingredients for life. Scientists believe tiny organisms called methanogens might have thrived there. They were hiding beneath the surface to stay safe from harsh radiation. These organisms could have breathed in hydrogen and carbon dioxide, exhaling methane gas. But as they gobbled up hydrogen, which was a powerful greenhouse gas back then, they might have cooled the planet too much. So it's possible these ancient microbes are still somewhere there, trapped in ice deep below the surface. They could be in a sort of deep sleep, waiting for better conditions to wake up, or some new cool friends from Earth. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.